Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's session, Attract High Paying Clients from Content. This is one of our first times on Zoom, doing a Zoom webinar. So it may work, it may not, but we'll see. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, wherever you're watching, wherever you're joining, there is a chat feature there and there's Q&A features. So please do, if you can see them on your screen, you're familiar with Zoom, the chat features are there. I'm going to try and make this as... as um, interactive as possible so just whilst we're waiting there'll be some of the people uh, joining shortly uh, i'm sure and some people are watching this on the replay they've registered and get the replay how many of you uh, tell me a little bit about what your business does in the chat here so we can kind of know what people do and then i can kind of tailor the session tonight i want to make it really practical uh, really useful so you can go do something with it so just in the chat wherever if you're on zoom Financial planning, Kieran's there. Um, so uh, helping people plan retirement, you know, the best way, uh, construction recruitment, uh, health and transformation coaching, coaching, uh, brilliant. Okay, so it looks like just from the people who fed back so far, it looks like most of you are selling a service. And most of you, um, wow, uh, marketing and advertising, brilliant. So it looks like everybody in the in the session tonight, at least live on Zoom, um, I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube or anything, it might be different, but food blogging and podcasting, artificial intelligence and data science. So yeah, we're really kind of getting, there's a thread here of services, number one, and there's a thread here of an expertise or knowledge-driven or uh, uh, uh Focus. So even, you know, Chandra with the food blogging and Courtney with marketing and Mario with healthcare software, there's an expertise coupled with services. Um, so uh, this works really good for tonight, actually, because um, uh, a lot of what we'll be talking about will cross over. So just again, uh, it's a bit of housekeeping. On uh, Zoom, there is a Q and A box at the bottom. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll see. And any point you go, do you know what? I've got some questions. Drop them in there and I'll see it flash up on my screen here and we'll answer your questions. So let's just um, make at the very beginning, and I want this to be as interactive as we can. So please do interact. Uh, you know, we're doing it on Zoom, so it makes it a bit more accessible. Um, tonight's session is all about how do you attract high paying clients with your LinkedIn content? Now, Depending on what you've been doing, you've probably been sharing stuff on LinkedIn. You might have been posting stuff on LinkedIn. But I've spent five years doing this, and I've spent too many hours with clients helping them do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what I would be doing and how I would advise. Let's say you were my client or you were on one of my programs. I'm going to give you in about 40 minutes the advice I'd be giving to one of my clients so that you can go away and apply it. So that's the whole crux of what I'm going to deliver tonight. I'm going to talk about how we structure the content. I'm going to share my screen and show you some of the content as well. And just whilst we're here, I'll just bob my LinkedIn profile up on screen. So this is me. So you can go find me on LinkedIn. You can ask me questions on LinkedIn. You can come and connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and despite what you may see, I started my account from zero. In fact, I had to change my account from when I started because I built up a network with the wrong people. And we really want to start at the fundamentals here of, okay, you've got a service. So some of you are coaching, marketing and advertising, uh, therapy and, th and hypnotherapists software, data science, AI, who do you want to talk to? Now, um, a couple of weeks ago, no, a week or so ago, I started a series of pieces of content where I was talking about how I took Maverick, which is the business that I lead, from a solopreneur to employing people in three, diff three different countries. Yeah, three different countries. Um, 
so we've got a base in the United Kingdom, we've got a base in the United States, and we've got a base, uh, where's the other one? Uh, soon to be based in Portugal. So we'll have three offices and there's about 47 people who work for the company. How did I do that with zero investment? And I'll tell you, I did it through LinkedIn. So uh, I didn't push myself on people. And I'm going to walk you through what I did. Uh, I'm going to tell you how I used to do it and how I do it now, because obviously LinkedIn's changed. So back in 2016, here's how I would do LinkedIn. I would be posting content, putting videos out there, putting stuff out there, not really getting tons of traction. In fact, sometimes I was posting funny clips. And I was doing that. And at the time, what you could do on LinkedIn is you could download all of your connections data. You still can, by the way. And if anybody wants to know where to do that, that's how uh, I'll show you. So I would download my connections data. And then I'd take that data to MailChimp. And I drop in once once a month or something an update to them to say, uh, how are you doing? Do you, do you fancy a meetup for coffee? And literally, we'd get 40, 50 coffees in the diary. This is before, obviously, we'd go on Zoom. It would be actually we'd go see them. And we'd do that every single month. And every single month, it would work. And back then, it wasn't as big a deal. But over the last few years, two things have happened. Number one. GDPR has happened. Now, GDPR, uh, it doesn't really affect LinkedIn, but I want to give you an indication of why it's a problem. So a lot of people who are doing the kind of cold, aggressive pitches will have this situation whereby people say, no, I'm not interested. Please do not contact me again. Effectively, they have opted out their consent on LinkedIn. So we don't really want to do that. And we don't want to really harass or annoy people. Yes, we have to do business. And yes, we've got to earn a living. But we don't want to annoy people unnecessarily. And all of you on this call tonight have said to me and shown me in what you're saying you're doing, you're selling services. And none of you are selling a commodity. If I look through the list again, none of you are selling a commodity. And so when we look at that kind of stuff, the, the kind of cold outreach, the generic outreach, it's quite low status. And I don't mean that to be derogatory to people who do it. I mean, if you're selling your expertise and your knowledge, you don't really want to be getting down into the mud trying to win business. So that's how I used to do it. And um, then I decided I don't really want to do that. And when GDPR came in in 2018, it made it more difficult to do that. It didn't make it impossible. You can still do it, but it, people, it rubs people up the wrong way. So we fast forward to GDPRs coming in 2018. How are we going to build an audience that sees that they need what we sell? How do we leverage content to really educate our audience so that they understand the value we bring and they can see uh, how it can work for them. Remember, people can see that you're really good at what you do and, and also at the same time not realize it will work for them. They're two very different things. So the complicated way of saying it, I like to say, people need to believe that you can do what you say you can do, number one. And people need to believe that you can do what you say you can do for them. They're two different things. And so when we look at our content, when we look on LinkedIn and go, how are we going to convince people of those two things? How are we going to convince people? And I say convince for a reason. How are we going to convince people that we can transform their business, transform their world, Everybody in here is affecting some kind of transformation. AI is going to transform the way a business functions. Uh, healthcare software is going to make a health, it's going to transform the way a, a healthcare organization, a hospital, or clinic will do business differently. Marketing will transform a business. Coaching will transform a person. So we're all selling some kind of transformation, a difference that we're going to make. 
So when we start to think about this and, and how we position ourselves on LinkedIn and how we use our content, we've really got to convince people that they need us. We've got to convince people that they need our help. That's what our content's there to do. Now, often, it, oh, it's really easy. Let's put it that way. It's really easy for us to slip into seeing things the way our, uh, the way, uh, seeing things from our own perspective. And really what we've got to do is join the dots. There's a really good film, and I'm going to get practical in a minute. There's a really good film called Margin Call. And it's about the financial crisis in uh, 2008, 2007. And um, it, there's a scene in that film where the, um, the board of this bank who's in real financial trouble is sat there going, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix this huge problem? It could kill our business. So they're sat around in this boardroom discussing the problem. And the CEO says, I want to hear from the person who found the problem. And this analyst stands up. And he's very nervous. And the CEO goes, please, you're talking to me. Just tell me. Tell me out how it is. And the analyst fumbles and, and kind of is aware that his bosses are in the room and also doesn't want to look silly. And then the CEO stops and says, please just explain to me as if I'm a small child or a golden retriever. Now, I love that scene because that scene really, really does underpin some of the key principle, the, the key principle of getting high paying clients from content. And it is this. You've got to make your value obvious. Often what we do is we speak to our audience assuming they are like us. They are not. We are the experts. You are the expert. They are the novice. Your job every day of what you do is you fix very specific problems for individuals and businesses. Now, you will no doubt network with people who do what you do. You might be in some communities. You might be in some networking groups with other people who are other marketing consultants, other AIs. You might read magazines and blog articles and all sorts of stuff from people who do similar things to what you do. And we fill our heads with lingo and language that means nothing to our target audience. So the first thing I want to get to is we have to convince people by making it simple. So here's a little formula that I want you to think about when it comes to your content. So uh, when you're writing a post, the first thing you need to think about is, who is this for? Who is this for? What is the problem I'm going to help them with? And why should they pay attention? What's in it for them? Now, remember I said earlier, there's two different things you've got to do. You've got to show people that you can fix their problem. Sorry, you can show people you can do what you say you can do. And you've got to convince people you can do what you can say you can do for them. Convincing is not about pleading. It's not about begging. It's not about all of that stuff. It's about helping people see through your content that you understand their world and you can fix their world. And in order to be understood, think about it in a conflict or an argument or a discussion. When people don't feel that you've understood their position, they don't really feel satisfied. So many amazing people are on LinkedIn and their content just does not hit the prospects between the eyes as this is for me. You know, we can put, are you a coach or are you a business owner or 
are you a data scientist or are you a marketing manager to try and say, oh, look, this is for me, but actually the message has to be for them. So you have to break down your content into a really simple, easy explainer. So think about it like this. What's the scenarios going on in their world? The service you provide, the coaching, the marketing, the software, whatever it is, let's imagine in six months' time, they've been, they've been your customer for six months. Let's imagine that, six months. And in fact, grab some pen and paper. Just message me in the chat and tell me when you've got some pen and paper. Just say, I've got a pen or a notepad or something that you can make a note on. Tell me when you've got them because I want you to write some stuff down. Mary's got a pen and great, brilliant, or pad, or tablet, or something to write on. Perfect, Alison has. Right. <laughs> Let's imagine this scene, and it doesn't matter what you're doing here, it's all the same, because you're all selling services, you're all selling transformation. So, it's day, day one, they've signed up. They've signed up, they've become your customer, day one. Let's travel into the future, to day 182, yeah? So we're 182 days in the future. That person has been with you, that customer, that client has been with you for six months, right? Here's the exercise. You cannot mention any element of the service in this next bit. So you can't say, oh, my journaling or my... Uh, uh, pay-per-click costs have gone down or anything like that. I want you to write down four things that are different or better in their business or in their lives because they've been with you for six months. So you can't say, oh, their website looks better or their, their AI's a better version or, you know, what's changed in their business? So Ms. Uh, uh, whoever's done the healthcare software, what's the impact? What's the change that's happened? So they, they, this is where they were on day one when they signed up. Where are they now? And it's nothing to do with the service. The answer is nothing to do with the service. So I'll give you an example. If I was selling SEO services, yeah, so website optimization. No, in fact, I'll give you an example from what I do. So I run an accelerator program. So we take people in and we go, right, let's accelerate your sales. Let's get you uh, more revenue, more clients from implementing our methodology on social media, particularly LinkedIn. In six months time, what will be the difference? Well, it won't be, you know how to use social media better. It will be, you are getting leads weekly people who are interested in your services because we help you build it, number one. Number two, you will have secured clients, paying clients from that process. You will have achieved 10 times ROI as a minimum in that six month period. So write down your four things, the, the transformation that they've got. So if somebody comes into my accelerator and it's 5,000 pounds, they are going to have 50,000 pounds worth of business as a minimum if they implement the program and stick with the program as a minimum. But they'll be getting leads weekly. So write them four things down. Yeah, everybody write those things down. Four things. Now, if you're struggling with this, right, don't worry. Everybody struggles with this. What's the transformation? It's easy to say, we'll make your website better. It's easier to say, we'll help you make smarter decisions. But what does that mean? If your website's better, what does that mean? If somebody's got a better mindset, what does that mean? If somebody's dealt with their narcissism, what does that mean? What's the knock-on? So uh, I'm not a narcissist. I don't know hypnotherapy and nar narcissism very well, but... Um, I'm assuming they'll have better relationships. They'll have more meaningful relationships. They'll have more uh, two-way relationships. They might find people, a uh, friendship group that actually values them and they don't have to pretend anymore. I don't know. But, but write those things down, four or five of them to start with. 
So you've write, wrote four or five transformations that have happened because of your service. Okay. Now let's go and put them into content. So how are we going to do that? So does somebody want to share one of their one of theirs? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to write content that will attract your client like a magnet. Now there's a couple, just somebody put a couple of put a couple of your things into the chat that you've wrote down. Yeah, there's no wrong or ba bad answers because we're doing this live. So, you know, don't get stressed if, you, if you're not happy with it 100%, but just put some in so I've got some ideas. And I'm going to show you how to construct um, a, a post. Um, so uh, Chen's put one in. Uh, somebody else has put in. Uh, let's have a look what else. Uh, we've got gain more clients. So Chandra is going to help people gain more clients. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Anybody else? Uh, growth mindset. Uh, Sarah's copied and pasted. Let's have a look at Sarah's email. So let's have a look at Sarah's email. So if we can just scroll up on the chat, that'd be brilliant. So what Sarah does is uh, in the chat, um, so she said, working with take, help take some of the burden off leaders while helping their teams achieve high productivity yeah, and sales and quality pipeline achievement. So, so if I boil that down, quality pipeline achievement, what do, what's the um, um, build a stronger pipeline? Yeah. So let's be certain. So just one thing about language in our content, and then I'll break this down into a post. Uh, language, uh, you know, we should always have a very active tone when it comes to talking about our service. The reason is a passive tone comes off as unconfident or not very confident. So quick tip here. I'm just going to uh, escape from this browser. Uh, hopefully. Uh, let me just get this to. There we go. So a quick tip here. Brilliant website called Hemingway app. And I'm going to write a post for Sarah in here. So the Hemingway app is about making sure Dan Bogdan's got their apparent. Yeah. So, yeah. So what we've got to do is create a very certain outcome. So um, let's go with confident in the business sales pipeline. So that's one of our key things. So for us to help a customer, yeah, for us to help a client, they are buying into a result. They are buying the transformation. You know, it's not about how clever the tech is. It's not about our method per se. It's about the result. Then it becomes about the confidence in the result. So the result is what they want. And the confidence comes from how you explain that, how you show them, how you get there. So for Sarah, I think it was Sarah, one of hers is you're going to be confident because your sales team are now focused and performing well and productive. You're going to have confidence in your sales pipeline. So that's, that's a key thing. So let me just spin this the other way. And hopefully you can see this on screen. So one of the ways that Sarah can add value in her content and really attract the attention of clients who really need her expertise is to talk to people who have great sales team, but performance and pipeline are struggling, right? So we don't want to blame the sales team, but we want to talk to them and go, 
Do you have an awesome team, but for some reason, the deals are just not going through? The pipeline's just struggling. Let me tell you some of the key things that prevent your sales team from hitting their top performance. Let me tell you about some of the key things that your sales team are, are suffering from that you can fix and will transform your pipeline. Yeah, so confidence. So Hemingway app, as well as being a great place to type, it will help you actually write content in a way that's easy to read, simple and confident. So uh, HemingwayApp.com. And here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you how to write the posts. But I'm going to start with a summary. So the first thing is... Um, so the summary is your sales team need just three things to max out their performance. I'm going to write this post. Without these, you'll always feel like you need to whip them to get results, right? So you notice how this text has been highlighted. So Hemingway is highlighting this to say, one of the sentences, there's only one, is difficult to read. It's also highlighted something in blue that tells me that this is too, too, too airy fairy. Yeah, so first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the just. And then I'm going to make it into a shorter and easier to read sentence. So now I've got two sentences. So this is my summary. So my summary is the end of my post. So at the end of my post is the summary. There's one more thing. One more thing I want to add in. Depending on, on what post it is, you want to put a call to action. So this is a real simple way. I do this all day long. I produce content to help people understand their challenges and see the opportunities ahead of them without loading it up too heavy with sales content. I'm going to show you another method in a moment. So you can see what I've done here. Hopefully uh, you can see it all. It's big enough on your screen. Is I've created a summary of a post. Yeah. I've said your sales team need three things to max out their performance. Without these, you'll always feel the need to whip them to get results. Yeah. And that's just my phraseology. Yeah. Text is blurry. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. Is that a bit better for everybody? Hopefully that's a bit better. I'll just zoom out a little bit just so you can get more on screen. Right? So that's the summary of my post. Summary. Yeah? So what most people do is they go, oh, I want to do a post. I want to convince people to buy from me, that they need me. They start at the top. Never start at the top of the post. Start at the summary. So there's the summary. Yeah? In other words, the, the two-line version of the post. Yeah, the two line version of the post. So then we go to the substance and the substance is I'm going to give them the three points. Yeah. So. Whatever those three points are. So, Sarah, you might have three points, you might have four points, you might have 10 points. It doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is that's the substance of the post. That's the, what people are really coming for. So this is how we do the post. This is also how you get the maximum views on your content as well. So we've done the summary. We've wrote the substance, which is my three points. Now we need to write the teaser. And the teaser is so, so important because that's what gets people to engage. So uh, we're going to write it. If you have a team, uh, a sales team, if you have 
a rock star sales team and you are wondering uh, i'm not very good at spelling sorry why the last six months their targets have been off it may not be the economy yeah Notice it highlighted it, saying it's too long. It might be something that makes them think it's the economy. So there's a teaser, right? I've not really said anything. I've just got people to think about it. So sometimes what I'll do in there is I'll use my objections. So when a client says to me, oh, Dean, I, I want to go on the accelerator, but I might put the buts in as part of my content, the, the, the objections. And so here we go. I've put the post together so far. Now I've done my teaser. Yeah. In other words, to whet their appetite, give them a bit of curiosity. My substance, which in this case, I'm going to give them three things. Yeah. Now, for most of you who are selling, most of you who are selling services and expertise, I'm going to come to something in a moment that will probably have frustrated the hell out of you. But I'm going to, I'm going to liberate you from that frustration by showing you this. So um, I put this post together. There's my teaser. There's my substance. There's my summary or wrap up, and there's my call to action. So in this post, I've given them some bits of value, but I've also helped them. Uh, I've, I've made something that's interesting to read. So before I make this post, finally, there's one more bit that we need. And the bit that we need is what we call the hook. And the hook is how do we get attention on the post? So on LinkedIn, the way we get attention on the post is by the first couple of lines and whatever visual you put with it. Now, the mistake that lots of people make is that they share branded content. Here's what happens when you put branded content. I'm not saying don't do it all the time, but for particular posts where you want to get your audience engaged and go, hmm, these people can help me, don't use branded content. Now, why? Because branded content is an advert. Think about it. Branded content is an advert. And so sometimes what we do is we create stock looking imagery or branded looking imagery that looks like a promotion. And we're trained to avoid promotion. When you get home from work, or if you're working um, uh, in an office, but if you, you know, when the postman comes, you can tell which are real letters and which are marketing letters. You can tell which are the posts that are marketing posts and which ones are real posts. What's the difference? Yeah, you can tell because some are branded and some aren't. Yeah, the way they're structured, you can tell. So what we do is we use as human an imagery as possible, at least branded stuff as possible, why? Because we want people to engage with the substance, not be put off by our sizzle. So our hook is something that's interesting, visually striking imagery, maybe a bit of curiosity going, what is this? What this is about? And then the first couple of lines. So again, this could be why your sales team are struggling to hit their numbers. Yeah. There are three reasons. Yeah. So I put this post together real quick and simple. Obviously, you take a little bit more time, but notice how I did it. Started at the bottom with the summary, the core thing that I'm going to talk about. And I worked up all the way through the post. And there's lots of different types of um, 
posts you can structure, but the key components, every post, every social media channel has this structure. A, summer, a summary, a call to action, a summary, substance, teaser, hook, even on TikTok, everywhere, the same thing, because we have to get humans' attention. If we get humans' attention, we get their time. If we get their time, we educate them. Now, if we want to get leads from LinkedIn, from our content, you would think the logic would be to simply showcase the amazing results we can get. I'm going to tell you that's wrong. If you just talk about the amazing results that you're getting, it will convince people that you can do what you say you can do, but it won't convince people that you can do what you say you can do for them. So the difference is you telling people how amazing you are, you telling people all the stuff you've done, the awards you've got, where you've been featured, all that stuff is like, whoa, they're kind of a big deal. But it doesn't help them see that you're kind of a big deal and you can help me. I need you. So how do you do that? Well, there's a, a bit of content that's really powerful. And I've just done it here. And it's what it's called diagnosis content. Diagnosis content. You see, it's all well and good if I have an illness. It's all well and good if I understand my illness to see that that doctor really knows what they're doing. Yeah, and I'll use the medical term just because it's really easy for everybody to understand. If I understand my illness, it's really easy for me to go, that doctor there is the best. Look at all those successes they've had. I've got to work with that doctor. But the reality is most of your clients, most of your potential customers don't know that they have a problem. Or if they do, they think it's something else. So let me give you an example. Um, uh, Sarah mentioned about the sales team and pipeline, right? When somebody is struggling with something, they try to treat the obvious signs. So if the pipeline's not working out, the salespeople are not doing their job. We need to fire them or we need to get, we need to teach them what to do or they need to put more work in. And so what happens is we try to treat the obvious thing in front of us so for an example uh, somebody mentioned um yeah mary uh, um yeah if they if they if, if they understand they have a problem right and and, and it, it's causing them issues if they understand their problem they will actually go to the doctor if they don't understand their problem they'll look for the obvious thing They'll look for something around them. Yeah, and I'll tell you a story. Um, it's a little bit sad, but, uh, you know, I want to share this. My mum, she uh, got ill, and um, she just said, oh, I've had a bug. I've had a cold bug, and I just can't shift it. She's, you know, getting on, and, and she said, no, I just can't shift this bug. And um, she went on like this for ages. And my dad was going, you need to go to the doctors. This bug's lingered for a while. And you should, you should get, get it checked. And she didn't, she didn't, she didn't. She had ter terminal cancer. And um, we lost her really, really fast. And it's a real sad story. And, you know, I, but, you know, it was like the whole thing kind of just happened so quickly that we didn't even realize what had happened. We didn't realize that the real problem was that this wasn't a bug. It was actually, she was terminally ill. And now I'm not saying that your client's terminally ill, but what I'm saying is in a medical context, your clients have a problem and you are the doctor, you are the expert trying to help them fix it, but you can't help somebody fix what they don't understand. So diagnosis content is about talking to the symptoms of their situation. Here's five reasons why your sales team are struggling to fill their pipeline, and you explain some of them. 
Because when people understand their problem better, they actually know the best solution. And usually the person who helped them see the problem gets the credit and the trust for helping to fix it. So this is like a big concept, but actually when you get it is actually people don't run. It's cynical, but it's true. People don't run to results. They run from problems. So I don't want that. I want that. Yeah. So we buy things. We, uh, we engage with people based on initially getting away from that to that. But if we start to try and appeal to people solely on what you can get, there might not be enough pain to push them away. So when I look at, okay, let's say I want to improve my mindset. If, my, if I understand that my mindset is keeping me poor or broke, guess what? I want to run from that mindset as fast as I can to something else. But I'm fundamentally running from most of your clients that you need to engage with and that you will engage with. When you have a conversation with them, they'll talk about, we don't want this. This is how it's not worked in the past. We're trying to, we want to do this, but this is what we've got. So think about it. Your content, whilst not going negative, should help people understand their problems better. The real problem. So you have to speak to their symptoms. And this might be a change of thought process for you. What's the symptoms that are happening in their business because they have that problem? So if they have a bad, let's say you're a, a grow, an entrepreneur and you don't have a growth mindset, what's happening in the business because of that? They're not taking risks. They're taking everything personal. They, they're beating themselves up. What's happening? Yeah. Explain the symptoms. If I go and say, if I say to somebody, um, uh, and you, I, I have this a lot. What if my client doesn't realize they're in pain? No, your client is in pain, but your client is feeling the pain of the symptom, not the root cause. So your job is to speak to the symptoms and show them how, if they've got that symptom, I can help you fix that by doing this. So diagnosis content is about helping people see where they are, helping them see the current symptom and helping them change the symptom by giving them a plan to fix it once and for all. Does this make sense to everybody? Yeah, does this make sense? Um, you can't help people if they're not running from something. Yeah, you can't. Simple as. If they're happy, they'll sit on the fence or it's a luxury. If they're happy, your service is a luxury. It's a whim. So if, if it, they're unhappy, it's a necessity. And then you can help people by showing, I will get you out of this situation. So you can bring them certainty of leaving there and getting to here. And this is the key to the content. I'd encourage you, I don't have time to cover it all tonight, but I'm going to do some Q&A, to write one piece of diagnosis content once per week. Once per week. Now, in my programs, I teach people how to get leads daily using one PDF. So one PDF. Find one big problem that you know you fix as part of your services. Then write down all of the symptoms in their business because of that one big problem and write a PDF about that. Find the most important symptom and title it that and give people a list of all of the symptoms and how those symptoms are caused by the big problem and explain to people how you help them fix that problem. Get that PDF, put it out in your post feed once a week. Just simple as that. Now, there's more I could show you about that. Some of my clients are getting three, four uh, people inquiring about it every day. You do that, you will get people inquiring you, with you who resonate with the pain, the symptoms you fix. 
So instead of appealing to people and going, hey, I help you do this with this and this with that. Now what you're doing is going, I'm talking to people who are already feeling the pinch of this problem. And I'm putting it out in a public space where they see it and go, it's like they're talking to me. So you gain credit from helping them understand their problem. And then you put out this document as a PDF, maybe you put it on a landing page they can download with their email, whichever you want to do. They come and grab hold of it, download it. And I do this every week. I put on events and webinars appealing to people who want to get to a goal because I know I can get somebody from zero to revenue in social media. It doesn't matter what industry, service, services are better, um, products are a bit harder. And if you've got a value, a service value of, of above two to 3,000 pounds, there's traction. We can do something. If you're selling a 500 quid thing, it's a mass market thing. You're probably best with some kind of churning system for that. But diagnosis content will unlock all the clients you want. Um, and you'll start to get, not immediately, because the first few times you do this, you'll have to practice and tweak. And by the way, if you want to go practice and tweak this, I'm going to let you into one more big revelation that I keep missing, I keep putting back, but I will tell you in a second. If you keep doing this, you'll get better at it. And then you'll get the infamous message that you'll get, I've been seeing your posts for a while now, and I think you can help me. I have a couple of them every day now where people are saying, I'm trying to do this. It's not working. Can you help me? Or I'm trying to... Um, build my brand and elevate my expertise so that people trust me and believe in me and inquire directly with me, but it's something's missing. So that is the key. You may take a few attempts, but you'll perfect it. And by all means, follow me on LinkedIn, hit my bell, connect with me if you want to. And when you do a post, send it to me in a message and I'll come back to you and tweak it. I'll suggest things to you. Yeah. I'm not trying to sell you anything there. You know, you'll see the value or you won't but I will help you with your post. If you say, I've just done this post, what do you think? I'll come and have a look. So diagnosis content, get one of them out per week. Get one personal post out so that people can see your face and know who you are. People need to trust you and get to know you. Yeah, those two posts, share some news, share some uh, promotional stuff, but mix it up. But that diagnosis piece has to be in there at least once a week to help people realize you know you know my problem. It's almost like you're talking to me. So let me set you one more thing that's going to be useful for you. And I've, I've lived by this principle. So everything I do, I put out these sessions and, you know, I'll tell you about my programs. And if you want to know more, you can schedule a call with us. Everybody gets a call if you want one um, to unpack this. Why? And I'll tell you why. So I have this model. And some of the coaches here will really kind of, um, kind of resonate with this. There's some people in our day-to-day -day work that we do that will love our content, will download our stuff, but will never buy anything. And these become a frustration to some people. If you're not getting clients, if you're not making the money you want to, it can, you can get quite resentful of those people who come and take everything for free, but don't, because if you leverage those people in the right way, they can help you get in front of the people who will pay. They will help you build your crowd. So we call them DIYers, triers, and buyers. And there are three types of people on social media in your target audience. There's only three. The DIYers are looking for a solution for themselves. Yeah. No amount of persuasion will convince those people that you should help them. They want to do it themselves. So they are consuming information to try and do it themselves. Those people will like, will comment, will engage, will share, will tell other people if you mobilize them well. So I will do free webinars and give loads of stuff away because I want to mobilize the people who go, Dean, I like your stuff, but I want to do it myself. 
I don't need you, but I like the stuff you say. So I'm going to engage with you. I'm going to like your post. I'm going to comment. I'm going to share. I'm going to do all of that stuff. That's my way of giving back for your free stuff. And I'm cool with that because they amplify my message. They get me out to other people. Group number one, DIYers. So your diagnosis posts will help these DIYers do it themselves. Then you have the triers. The triers are the people who come, try it themselves, try to DIY and fail. If you help those people, they come back to get your help. So DIYers, triers. Yep. So triers will try to DIY, struggle and come back. So again, don't get upset about these people because in the long run, these will be your customers. These will be your customers. So you've got DIYers, triers. Then we have the mysterious group, the buyers. So triers and buyers will always pay you money. Not all of them, but they will. The buyers are the people who you do not know. They're not engaging. They're not commenting. They're not messaging. They're watching. And I get one or two of them a week coming through saying, I've seen your stuff. I really want to, uh, you can help me. Can we have a call? And it's the easiest sale you'll ever do. Your content is there for them. And along the way, you will pick up triers and the DIYers will amplify you. But only if you, if you give content that helps the DIYers. If you help the DIYers, you'll attract the buyers. If you help the DIYers, if you give value to them, imagine you're giving value to them, they will go, do you know what? I'm going to share that. Do you know what? I'm going to tell my friends about it. Do you know what? I'm going to send this to somebody else or over a coffee or on a Zoom call. I'm going to say, oh, you should follow this person or you should know about this person. If you mobilize them and say, look, if you get value from this, tell other people. If you get value from this, like it, comment it, share it. If you get value, do that. Write a post and say this Dean Seddon's not, not, not that bad, actually. I, I quite enjoyed it. If you do that, that's brilliant. If you get your DIYers to do that, they will amplify your voice and put you in front of the triers and in front of the buyers. But you have to do the diagnosis content. And then from that, you can start to promote your service and say, I've got this coming up. I've got that coming up. Uh, do you want to know about it? And I, uh, you, can, you can create your PDF, put it out there on a, as a post on a landing page, pick up some leads, follow those leads up. Works every time. I can, I can put up now, I've built my audience with my DIYers. I've built my audience where if I put a post up, I know, um, I know my post is going to get at least, even if I post at nine o'clock at night, I'm going to get at least 1,500 views, at least. Why? Because my DIYers value the stuff that I've done to help them and amplify it. Then the triers see it and they go, oh, I'm going to have a look at that. I'll sample that out. And then the buyers. Sarah, there's a structure. Sarah, there's a couple of things about getting likes and comments. Um, I don't know your post, but uh, you can get it working. There's a rhythm that you have to get on LinkedIn. And depending on how inactive you've been, uh, it can be a bit tricky to get back. But uh, there's, a, there's a rhythm that you want to get. So if you're starting out from scratch and you've not been posting, because what I have so far gets like 1,400 views and 10 likes, generates no clients. So Sarah, you have to spin the content around. I'm more than happy, by the way, free. If anybody wants this, um, uh, I don't know whether we can put it in the chat, but we'll put our email address in the chat. And one of our content team, not content team, a content, like we have like coaches. So we have a LinkedIn coach and we have a content. They're not going to sell you anything, but they'll come on, bring your posts and they'll go and look through them with you and give you some tips. So if you're struggling with anything, they'll go, hey, let me show you a couple of things. Um, so Sarah, here's a little tip. For the next three days, post something every day and touch the emotions. So touch the heart. So tell a story with maybe a picture of yourself. 
Then the next day, share something that's positive and interesting, but uh, it's positive and interesting, not too heavy. Then the next day, share a motivational quote. Now, you might think, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, LinkedIn has this habit where if you don't get in comments and engagement, you won't get comments and engagement. So it's like a vicious circle. So one of the ways to break it is to do more low-key emotive stuff, engaging stuff, human-looking stuff, and you get attention. And then from there, you can start to insert posts in. The, the biggest challenge I've seen for somebody is they've had... Um, and I'll give you another tip as well. I don't advocate this as a long-term solution, but it will help you a little bit. Um, uh, I've seen somebody have a situation with 25,000 followers and, and can't get likes because they've been active, inact uh, inconsistent, and it's just like trying to get off the ground again. So um, it, you have to kind of warm people up and you might have to do some more low-key stuff for a few days to get that momentum going before you can uh, switch over. There is one more tip I can give you, and it's it's not. I'll give you one more tip before we we sign off. So this is not a fix by any means, but one of the things you can do to get your posts going is if you've got a group of friends, ask them to deliberately come and like and comment on your posts um, within the first couple of hours of it being posted, just to get it going. Um, I have a community because obviously we've got lots of people in our programs and courses. I have a community of about um, three, 400 business owners um, and they all support each other when uh, they need something on their posts. Um, I'm more than happy if anybody's struggling, they can come and join this community. It's, it's free. There's no charge for it. Um, it's great networking because you get to meet new people. You get to interact with new people. But part of the deal is we support each other's posts. So you won't get three, 400, but you might get 10 or 15 people commenting to give you some support to get your posts going. It's not a replacement, but it helps kickstart the posts because you've now got some people on the lookout to help you out. Um, so uh, if you want to know a bit more about that, again, it's free. It's not a solution for real engagement. It's just to break that kind of cycle of not getting enough traction to get the momentum. Um, so again, drop us an email if you want that. So try us, DIYers, triers, and buyers. Remember this. Engage, if you help the DIYers, they give you the rest. If you get, if you think see the DIYers as people who are just freeloaders, you're not really harnessing the power of them. And if you look at all social media, all the big content creators, that's what they do. They harness the power of the DIYers. And that's how they pick up the triers and buyers. So that's number one. Diagnosis content. Yeah, really important. Help people understand their pain. Help them understand their symptoms and show them how you can get them out of it to a destination. But the pain is the motivator. The pain is the attention. And remember, if you're going to structure a post, start from the summary, go to the substance, then a teaser, then the hook, in other words, what does it visually look like in the feed and will it create the curiosity to get people to spend more time in it? One final tip, you want more comments? Ask more questions. Give more opinions on the topic. Create some debate. Train your people, your audience to engage by posting polls. Polls are a brilliant way to get more engagement. Um, really important. Um, any more questions? Any other questions? Dan, I'm not sure what the question is there. Any, uh, any other questions? Going once, going twice. By all means, come find me on LinkedIn. We can have a chat on LinkedIn. But again, if you want to, if you want to get with one of our team, that I promise they won't hard pitch you or anything, but they'll give you some tips. And if one of our programs are fit, we'll tell you about it. If it's not, we'll give you the stuff and just let you go for it. I do have a content course. If you want it, message me. I think at the moment it's $95 for lifetime access. And we walk you through how to create the ideas, how to do that whole start with the end and work forward. All, all the whole process in there if you want that too. 
just message me if you want it. If you don't, it's no, it's cool, no, it's cool with me. Um, but go try this diagnosis content, triers, DIYs, triers, and buyers change everything. When you suddenly see that these people who are getting everything for free that can become your army changes everything. Look, I got to run because I've run over time. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do come find me on LinkedIn. If you've enjoyed this session, you've got value from this session, tell other people, you know, uh, tell them you've got something good. Do a post about it. You know, that would be awesome. Um, but thank you for coming. I hope it's been helpful. Remember, if you learn something, it's only as good as what you do with it. This is all rubbish and a waste of your time if you don't act on it. So go do it and watch what happens. Because I tell you, this has transformed the way I do stuff. And I'm doing it every single day. I wouldn't quit it. I put it in my team's employment contracts that they should do it too. No matter what, you want to work at Maverick, you have to post on LinkedIn. It's that simple. So thank you so much for joining us. Do all the stuff, the thumbs up, the likes, the comments, all that are brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm back next week with another session and we're going to go dig into some more stuff that's going to help you grow your business, get more clients and make more money in your business. So thank you for joining us.